Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, I investigate the four integrals x from 0 to 1, log x squared, log 1 plus or minus x over 1 plus or minus x. The investigation relies heavily on the integral x from 0 to 1, x to the a, log x to the b, which is minus 1 to the b, gamma b plus 1 over a plus 1 to the b plus 1. Let's start with the case in which we have a minus sign in the numerator and a minus sign in the denominator. Replace x by 1 minus x. We have integral x from 0 to 1, log x, the square of log 1 minus x over x. We make use of the dilogarithm function. Dilogarithm of x is integral u from 0 to x minus log 1 minus u over u. Dilogarithm of x has this series representation, summation over positive integer n of x to the n over n squared. The first derivative of the dilogarithm with respect to x is 1 times this integrand with u replaced by x. So the first derivative is minus log 1 minus x over x. We can write the integrand here as log x, log 1 minus x, log 1 minus x over x. We can write this integral as minus integral x from 0 to 1, log x, log 1 minus x, d, dilogarithm of x. Let's do integration by parts. We have this product. We need to take the limit as x tends to 0 from above and as x tends to 1 from below. The dilogarithm of 0 is 0. The dilogarithm of 1 is zeta of 2, which is pi squared over 6. Log x times log 1 minus x tends to 0 in both cases. This can be verified using several applications of L'Hopital's rule. Thus, when we integrate by parts, we get integral x from 0 to 1, dilogarithm of x, multiplied by the first derivative of this product. This derivative is log 1 minus x over x minus log x over 1 minus x. We can split this into two integrals. In the first one, we have here log 1 minus x over x. So the first integral is minus half times the square of the dilogarithm of x. When we use the limits of integration, we get minus 1 half times the square of zeta of 2. We still have one integral, x from 0 to 1, dilogarithm of x, log x times 1 minus x. We use the series representation of the dilogarithm function and also of the function 1 over 1 minus x. The dilogarithm is summation over positive integer n of x to the n over n squared. 1 over 1 minus x is summation over positive integer m of x to the m minus 1. If we do the integration first, we have integral x from 0 to 1, x to the n plus m minus 1, log x. By using this result here, in the numerator, we have minus 1 to the power 1, which is minus 1, gamma of 2, which is 1, divided by n plus m to the power 2. This is 1 over n plus m squared. We have this double sum. The sum is 1 over n squared, 1 over m plus n squared. Note that if m is 1, we have n plus 1 squared. If m is 2, we have n plus 2 squared. We can rewrite this double sum as n from 1 to infinity, k from n plus 1 to infinity, 1 over n squared, k squared. And this double sum here, index k is strictly greater than n. Write down the double sum as 1 half the sum plus 1 half another copy of the sum. And this double sum, rewrite n as k and k as n. So we have summation k from 1 to infinity, n from k plus 1 to infinity, 1 over n squared k squared. We are summing a real valued positive quantity. So by Tonelli, we can do the sum in any order of our choice. If we sum k from 1 to infinity, n from k plus 1 to infinity, this is equivalent to summing n from 1 to infinity, k from 1 to n minus 1. If n is 1, then this summation is equal to 0. This sum here, in which k is strictly greater than n, is equal to this sum in which k is strictly less than n. This means that this double sum can be written as 1 half the sum of these two double sums. These two can be combined as summation n from 1 to infinity, k from 1 to infinity, k not equal to n, 1 over n squared k squared. We can write down this double sum as summation over positive integer n and positive integer k of 1 over n squared k squared. And then we subtract the terms in which the two summation indices are equal. So we subtract summation n from 1 to infinity, 1 over n squared n squared, that's n to the power 4. This double sum is the square of zeta of 2 minus zeta of 4. Zeta of 2 is by squared over 6. Zeta of 4 is by to the power 4 over 90. The integral of interest is minus 1 half zeta of 2 squared plus 1 half zeta of 2 squared. These two terms cancel. We are left with minus 1 half zeta of 4. The integral of interest is minus by to the power 4 over 180. We later need the same integral but x from 0 to 1 half rather than x from 0 to 1. The integral from 0 to 1 is the integral from 0 to 1 half plus the integral from 1 half to 1. In this integral here, replace x by 1 minus x. So we get an integral x from 0 to 1. Log 1 minus x becomes log x. Log x squared becomes log 1 minus x squared. This 1 minus x becomes x. We have log x over x. So this integral can be written as integral x from 0 to 1 half. The square of log 1 minus x, d 1 half log x squared. We do integration by parts. The product of log x times log 1 minus x tends to 0 as x tends to 0 from above. And here is the value that we get when x is equal to 1 half. We also get minus integral from 0 to 1 half, 1 half log x squared times 2 log 1 minus x times minus 1 over 1 minus x. 
this integral is exactly equal to that one. So the integral from 0 to 1 is double the integral from 0 to 1 half. We have this extra term, which is 1 half log 2 to the power 4. Moving this to the other side and dividing by 2, we get that integral x from 0 to 1 half log x squared log 1 minus x over 1 minus x is minus pi to the power 4 over 360 minus 1 fourth times log 2 to the power 4. Now the integral has log 1 plus x in the numerator and 1 minus x in the denominator. We write down this logarithm as an integral y from 0 to 1 x over 1 plus x y. Let's multiply and divide by 1 plus y. We have here x plus x y, which can be written as 1 plus x y minus between brackets 1 minus x. If we divide this by the product of 1 minus x and 1 plus x y, we get 1 over 1 minus x minus 1 over 1 plus x y. The other part of the integrand is log x squared over 1 plus y. Let's integrate first with respect to the variable x. We need to obtain two integrals. Let's start with integral x from 0 to 1 log x squared over 1 minus x. 1 over 1 minus x is summation over non-negative integer g of x to the g. If we integrate term by term, in the numerator we get minus 1 squared gamma of 3. This is 2 divided by g plus 1 cubed. This is 2 zeta of 3 or 2 times the trilogarithm of 1. If we have 1 plus xy rather than 1 minus x, again we do the expansion. We have summation g from 0 to infinity minus xy to the power g. When we integrate term by term, we get summation g from 0 to infinity minus y to the power g times 2 over g plus 1 cubed. Add 1 here. We need to divide by minus y, which is a positive real number between 0 and 1. We get minus 2 over y times the trilogarithm of minus y. The integral of interest can be written in terms of the trilogarithm of 1 and the trilogarithm of minus y. 2 is a common factor. We have the trilogarithm of 1 divided by 1 plus y plus the trilogarithm of minus y divided by y times 1 plus y, which can be written as 1 over y minus 1 over 1 plus y. This integral can be split into two integrals. The polylogarithm of order 4 and argument set is integral y from 0 to z, the trilogarithm of y over y, replacing y by minus y. We get integral y from 0 to minus z, the trilogarithm of minus y over y. This means that this integral is the polylogarithm of order 4 with argument minus 1. We also have this too. For that integral, we do integration by parts. This is integral y from 0 to 1, trilogarithm of minus y minus trilogarithm of 1, d log 1 plus y. The product tends to 0 as y tends to 0 from above. When y is 1, we get log 2 times the trilogarithm of minus 1 minus the trilogarithm of 1. We also have the integral y from 0 to 1, log 1 plus y. We need the derivative of this trilogarithm, which is equal to integral u from 0 to minus y, dilogarithm of u divided by u. The derivative with respect to y is minus 1 times the dilogarithm of minus y over minus y. The dilogarithm of minus y is integral u from 0 to minus y minus log 1 minus u over u. The derivative with respect to y is minus 1 times minus log 1 minus minus y divided by minus y. The first derivative is minus log 1 plus y over y. This means that the antiderivative of the function here is minus 1 half times the square of the dilogarithm of minus y. This is the value that we get when we use the limits of integration. The trilogarithm of 1 is zeta of 3. The trilogarithm of minus 1 is minus summation n from 1 to infinity minus 1 to the n minus 1 over n cubed. If we don't have this factor, then the sum is zeta of 3 because we have minus 1 to the n minus 1. From zeta of 3, we need to subtract double the sum of the reciprocals of the cubes of the positive even integers. So this is minus zeta of 3 minus 2 times 1 over 8 zeta of 3. The same idea can be used to obtain the dilogarithm of minus 1 and the polylogarithm of order 4 with argument minus 1. The difference, of course, is that here we get zeta of 2, there we get zeta of 4. We can write down our final result as a factor times zeta of 3 plus a rational number times boiled to the power 4 integral x from 0 to 1 log x squared log 1 plus x over 1 minus x is 7 log 2 over 2 zeta of 3 minus 19 over 720 pi to the power 4. In our third integral, we have a plus sign upstairs and downstairs. Let's do the change of variables x equal to y over 1 minus y. So 1 plus x is 1 over 1 minus y dx is dy over the square of 1 minus y log 1 minus x becomes minus log 1 minus y 
log x squared becomes the square of log y minus log 1 minus y. When expanded, this is log y squared plus the square of log 1 minus y minus 2 log y log 1 minus y. When x is 0, y is 0. But when x is 1, y is equal to 1 half. We can split our integral into three integrals in each y is from 0 to 1 half. We have already obtained the value of this integral when the integrand has a minus sign in the numerator and denominator. The antiderivative here is 1 fourth log 1 minus y to the power 4. We can write this part as minus 2 over 3 integral y from 0 to 1 half log y d log 1 minus y cubed. When y is 1 half, we get minus 2 over 3 log 2 to the power 4. We also get 2 thirds times integral y from 0 to 1 half, the cube of log 1 minus y times 1 over y. What if we have this integral but y from 0 to 1? We can replace y by 1 minus y and obtain the integral y from 0 to 1 log y cubed over 1 minus y. 1 over 1 minus y is summation g from 0 to infinity, y to the g. Integrating turn by turn, we get minus 1 to the power 3, that's minus 1, times gamma of 4, which is 3 factorial of 6. So in the numerator, we have minus 6. Downstairs, we get g plus 1 to the power 4. This summation here is zeta of 4. The same integral can be split into two integrals from 0 to 1 half and from 1 half to 1. This is the integral we are interested in. And this second one, replace y by 1 minus y. We get integral y from 0 to 1 half log y cubed over 1 minus y. To evaluate this integral, again, we use that 1 over 1 minus y is summation g from 0 to infinity y to the power g. But now our integral is from 0 to 1 half. We use the substitution y equal to 1 half times z. z is from 0 to 1. In the denominator, we get 2 to the power g plus 1. Log y cubed becomes log z minus log 2, all cubed. We get four integrals, but all are from 0 to 1. So we can apply our rule that the integral of x to the a log x to the b is minus 1 to the b gamma of b plus 1 over a plus 1 to the power b plus 1. We have four sums, all expressible in terms of the Volley logarithm. The di logarithm of 1 half and the tri logarithm of 1 half have these explicit values. We now know this integral and that one. So we have obtained this integral. We multiply by 2 over 3. Add this part to obtain the integral of interest. The last integral is x from 0 to 1 log x squared log 1 minus x over 1 plus x. This integral can be written as integral x from 0 to 1 log 1 minus x d integral y from 1 to x log y squared over 1 plus y. The product of these two functions of x is 0 and the limit as x approaches 0 from above or 1 from below. When we do integration by parts, we get minus integral x from 0 to 1, this integral times the first derivative of log 1 minus x, which is minus 1 over 1 minus x. Rewrite the integral y from 1 to x as an integral y from 0 to x minus an integral y from 0 to 1. And this second integral just replace y by z. In this first integral, use the change of variables y equal to x z. x is held constant, dy is x dz, z is from 0 to 1. This y and that y are replaced by xz. Note that this part is multiplied by x over 1 minus x, which is x minus 1 plus 1 over 1 minus x. That's minus 1 plus 1 over 1 minus x. Write this minus 1 as minus 1 over 1 plus z minus z over 1 plus z. x over 1 minus x is multiplied by log xz squared over 1 plus xz. So here it is multiplied by these two terms. And here it is multiplied by minus 1 over 1 plus z. We can simplify this bracket. In the denominator, we have 1 minus x times 1 plus z. Upstairs, we get 1 plus z minus z plus xz. z minus z is 0. And 1 plus xz over 1 plus xz, that's 1. So the term log xz squared over 1 plus xz is multiplied here by minus 1 over 1 plus z times 1 plus xz. There, it's multiplied by 1 minus x, 1 plus z. The same quantity multiplying minus log z squared. We do these double integrals separately. Let's start with this one. We have log x plus log z all squared minus log z squared. So this is log x squared plus 2 log x log z. We can separate the integrals with respect to x and z. This integral is log 2. This is 2 zeta of 3. So we have 2 log 2 times zeta of 3. This one is minus half zeta of 2. And that one is minus zeta of 2. When multiplied by 2, we get zeta of 2 squared which is pi squared over 36. What about this double integral? Let's do the change of variables. t equal to xz. dx is dt over z. When x is 0, t is 0. When x is 1, t is z. The antiderivative of minus 1 over z times z plus 1 is log 1 plus z over z. 
we integrate by parts. When z tends to 1, this product is 3 zeta of 3 over 2. When z tends to 0 from above, the product tends to 0. We also get minus integral z from 0 to 1, log 1 plus z over z times the derivative of this function with respect to z, which is log z squared over 1 plus z. This is log 1 plus z minus log z. We split into two integrals. One of them is on the previous page. The other one is obtained by writing 1 over 1 plus z as summation g from 0 to infinity minus z over to dj, then integrating term by term. We get a result in terms of zeta of 4. Combining all these terms, we get our fourth integral. 